Ladies and gentlemen, the Shred Gaming Citicom video. I'm sure you're all familiar with Rackspace. They are, of course, one of the major players in the cloud computing industry, and they have just made major strides with their acquisition of Zero VM, which is a ridiculously lightweight so open source hypervisor, and it's created to run cloud applications. We'll speak about that more in just a moment. Van Lindbergh, who serves as Rackspace's VP of Intellectual Property, said, and I quote, Zero VM is efficient because it's made to virtualize applications, not machines. The runtime virtualizes only the server parts so that do the actual work at hand, making it much faster. Today, the fastest virtual servers take at least two minutes to create, while virtual VM takes less than five milliseconds or about one twenty thousandth of as long. Zero VM is fast enough that you can pull, put every request into its own mini VM to spread horizontally. Zero VM breaks down the barriers between compute and storage where traditional cloud architectures have needed to move the data to the app for processing Zero VM flips that approach and moves the app to the data. This dramatically increases speed of access and decreases latency. There's also a couple of other additional benefits. Um, in contrast to the traditional hypervisors where multiple users share the same VM, the virtual machine in other words, Zero VM lets individual users run the application sessions isolated and zero VM trims the virtual fat because it's only actually virtualizing key specific server parts which are needed to perform particular pieces of work. In the day of age now we're living in, bloat is becoming one of the big problems. And the very fact of the matter is if you can have an application that pretty much just virtualizes a service or an app that you need, spreads its wings out on the cloud, runs the exact services that you need. And by the way, <clears throat> you may be curious because lightweight can mean many different things. Like, for example, what's lightweight? Well, in this case, it's only 75 kilobytes. That is ridiculous. That's, that's far less than even a tenth of a megabyte. And that, in my friends, is the way to go forward. Um, efficient use of code, efficient use of computing, and the ability to go wide, in other words, the ability to process over multiple servers, multiple processors, is definitely going to be the way to go forward um, for quite a long time now. Obviously, virtual servers are here to stay, and Rackspace got pretty thoroughly, well, let's just use the word owned, um, by Microsoft actually with Azure. Um, you can actually test that, uh, check that out in a previous video. There's all links there. You can uh, see Windows Azure um, pretty much uh, in various tests beat not only Rackspace. I mean, Rackspace were only a little bit behind, but they pretty much slapped um, Amazon repeatedly in the face. So Microsoft are definitely far ahead because of the huge financial investments they've made in Windows Azure. Now, Windows Azure, of course, is instrumental for Microsoft in regards to the Xbox One. Meanwhile, for Sony, Sony are going to be benefiting from any improvements from Rackspace. Why? Because Rackspace are teaming with, my, uh, with Sony. And they're actually going to be utilizing the open, uh, the open cloud to help to push technologies. And of course, this is going to be utilized for various things, including, but certainly not limited to, Gaikai and the PlayStation Network. It'll be interesting how they manage to virtualize this. And Sony, of course, can utilize that code because it is x86, their console. Obviously, nothing has been announced yet, but I certainly wouldn't be surprised if in the future there are some additions. And obviously, such a light piece of code um, and so the applications can actually be used so well um, I'm certain that certain applications are going to start to be pushed towards this server side because it's such a light little application it also reduces the load on the servers and of course if you're not running services which aren't 
important which aren't even being accessed while you're actually utilizing an application um, it's pretty big deal actually um, it's a massively big deal and just the ability to spool up a server or a task within just you know a ridiculously short amount of time like a virtual server takes a couple of minutes uh, to give you an idea to give you guys a rough you know very basic idea um, depending on which company you're going with a proper server like I'm not talking um, a web server we're talking like a proper dedicated web server or a proper dedicated server can take anything from a couple of hours all the way up to maybe a day maybe even a couple of days depending how unlucky you are to provision um, in other words the company will basically format the hard drive to your specifications they may even have to assemble pieces of hardware it could be a bit of a nightmare and this is certainly something I personally had to go through um, when I was provisioning servers and so on for my company uh, for the company I work for which obviously is nothing to do with RGT but still virtual servers have definitely simplified the process for the most part of course they are just mini um, basically mini computers running inside the mini operating systems and obviously I've done a lot on virtual servers before so I'm not going to go super in depth into it but the ability to quickly create a machine and so on is great but the problem is you're a getting a lot of wasted usage um, from applications so you're not necessarily getting uh, full use out of the compute hours but furthermore as well there is still that latency there whereas obviously if this can go up and down very quickly it's going to be very useful I imagine for things such as gaming anyway hopefully you've enjoyed the video I'll see you soon take care bye for now